hey to all the real estate professionals out there. I want to let you know the Buyer's Mind is sponsored by Homebridge Financial. Homebridge loan officers are experts in new home financing, and they bring sales ideas and strategies and market intelligence and programs that will help sell homes. To learn more about that, go to builder.homebridge.com. Homebridge Financial, home financing made easy. Looking for an easy way to stand apart from your competition? You need video email. Let's talk about it on today's episode of The Buyer's Mind. Well, welcome everyone once again to The Buyer's Mind. I am your host, Jeff Shore. We always want to know the way that our customers think. And right now, our customers are more technologically astute than perhaps they have ever been. Part of that is because they've been forced to be, but they are ready and jumping into more and more technological aspects of the way they live their life. So as sales professionals, how do we match them on that? Now, somebody who knows a little bit about that technology, technological side of the world, our show producer, Paul Murphy. Uh, Murphy, you've been involved in tech for a long time. Now, suddenly we're seeing this tech heyday where we're seeing mass adoption, right? For a long time, tech was just the arena of the few people who sat behind the curtain and spun webs uh, where all of us lay people had no idea what was going on. Now, suddenly everybody's into technology. How are you feeling about that? Are, are, are you OK letting people into your little kingdom there? You know, it's rough uh, because it's what's called the democratization of uh, technology. And so as it gets easier for people to use, suddenly I find myself not being the expert I used to be. <laughs> but that's OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly uh, the, the word ease is an important word there, because if it's not easy, it's not going to get adopted. But if it if it is something that's relatively easy, it'll make a big difference. And, and I think when we think, look at some of the technology that's available out there, that it's readily available, there is technology that's easy that for some reason is still not being adopted. And one of the things that we're going to look at today is video email, the opportunity to be able to connect with people by video versus that standard email. Now, I'm one of those people, I get tons of emails a day, people pitching me stuff all the time, and I've got one finger hovering over the delete button. I cannot delete emails quickly, quickly enough because they're spam. As far as I'm concerned, they're spam. Maybe they don't legitimately qualify as spam, but to me, they're spam because they're not personal. They're trying to get me to, to click on a link that doesn't mean anything to me. That's not the case with video email. Uh, Murph, any experience with video email on your side? Not a lot, actually. I, I've gotten just a few, as a matter of fact, just from our host, uh, not our host, but our yeah. guest that will be on today. I yeah. got one from Ethan. Right. And I got yeah. one from Steve. But other well, than that, as, as will be appropriate, I would I would think that they had better sent them. And that's where we're going to go now. Uh, Steve Passanelli, Ethan Butte at BombBomb.com, a video email service. And it's a, it's a great conversation. It's an important conversation because this should not be cutting edge. But it absolutely still is. Let's learn today about how you can stand apart from everybody else out there using video email. All right, Steve, Ethan, welcome to the Buyer's Mind. Uh, happy to have you uh, on the program to the opportunity for us to uh, chat a little bit about what's going on in this weird, weird age. At the time we're recording this, of course, now we've, we, we had gone into lockdown and then come out of lockdown and got back into lockdown. By the time people are viewing this, we have no idea where we're going to be. The only thing that we know for sure is that there are technologies that have suddenly risen to the occasion. If you try and jump on now, you're probably already behind. But I'd like to go back to the origin of video email. And uh, you, you certainly couldn't have planned what's happening right now. But this has got to be really interesting days for you. So either one of you just get started here. Uh, uh, tell us about what you're going through right now. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for having us, Jeff. It's not very often that Steve and I get to do do these conversations together. So it's yeah. a little yeah. bit more fun and special for us. So thanks for bringing us together. Um, the interesting thing is that the problem that we solve for people, which is staying face to face with the people who matter most to your success, wh whether that's your sales team or your prospects or your customers or suppliers, vendors, et cetera, is the exact same problem we were solving for people five years ago. It's just that they feel that pain so much more right. acutely today because you can't get on a plane and see people. And so um, we've been helping people solve this problem of being more connected and being more personal for a long time. Uh, but it is, it is nice to see uh, more rapid adoption when the need becomes so much more obvious and the pain more acutely felt. 
not unlike at all the Zoom platform that we're going with right now. The, the creators of Zoom could have never known, but what a heyday. Uh, Steve, take us back to the early time when you first formed uh, Bomb Bomb and and th- this video email concept, uh, which was still. I, I have to believe that your job was not. I, you had to get the technology right, but the hardest part of the job, I would have to assume, would have been selling this thing and getting people to understand exactly what it is and why they need it in the first place. Yeah, well, actually, I, I had the unique experience uh, of being on both sides uh, of, of the ball game. Cause I didn't join bomb bomb until, until 2015, you know, coming on as the, as the, uh, VP of marketing and then the CMO. Um, but I was a customer in 2011 and that's and Ethan, you guys had like 200 customers then. Like it was like, I was like 201 or something like that. And so when I came on as a customer, I had a wildly different perspective of what I could do with the product. And it wasn't the right one. I, mm-hmm. I signed up for bomb bomb. I used it to send out mass messages. I created marketing videos and dropped them in and blasted my customers in 2011 with these marketing videos. And I was like, ah, it's not, you know, it works okay, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a different version of constant contact with, with video. And right. it took a while to understand, you know, for me, you know, then, and even for people now that that's not what you use it for. It, it's a replacement mm-hmm. for one-to-one communication, for typed out text to help you communicate more clearly and effectively. And that change has been so gradual until the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, oh my God, I need to communicate. And I can't be in a Zoom right. meeting 100% of the time. I can't get that person. I either don't have the relationship to hop in a Zoom meeting with that person yet. I need to send a, a message more quickly, but it's it needs more than a text-based uh, nuance or, or nuance than text can provide. And what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to take a cosmic leap back in my ability to communicate and send text, but I can't get on a Zoom call either. And so all that communication in between is where video messaging helps. You know, it's really interesting that th- this shouldn't be cutting edge, but it still is cutting edge and it always will be until people really adopt it. Wildly, but I, I, you know, I look at it as a business owner, right? We, we've got, uh, there's 14 people at Shore Consulting and, and I'm sure like the both of you inundated every day with marketing emails. We've got this great product over here. We've got a perfect guest for your show, whatever it is. You have no idea who I am, right? It's just this mess. And I read emails with one finger hovering over the delete button. I, I cannot delete emails fast enough. I'm, I'm sure you guys are exactly the same way. Um, but when I'm looking at it here, what you just said, Steve, was really interesting because you could go with the mass, you know, here is the message to everybody. But if you're thinking about how we communicate to individuals, you wouldn't walk up to somebody on a street and say, hi, I'm Jeff. And let me tell you about my great stuff. That's not the way that human connection works. There's a personalization that comes into play. And that's, I, I would assume that that's got to be one of the more rewarding things uh, that you get to see every day is that you're breaking through the clutter of what goes on in those mass emails. As a recipient of any email, anyone out there that receives email, which is everyone, their job is to sort through all the junk in their email inbox to find the messages that are truly important. And technologists and marketers messed that up over the years. And we made it more difficult than ever for people to discern, is this an important message just for me? Or is this a blast message for for everyone? And so everyone... Uh, as we, as the years go by, we become acutely aware of what's personal and what isn't. And, and sometimes we get fooled and sometimes we don't, but one thing that, that is so clear to recipients that receive a video is, and this is the last, last message that I sent. I sent a video to April and I said, long time, no see April on a little whiteboard here. I held it up in the beginning of the video Instantly, April's radar goes off that this isn't a marketing message. This is for me. I need to watch this. I need to pay attention. I need to reciprocate my time. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. You know, one of the things that's really interesting to me is that I I mentioned that this should not be cutting edge, but it still is as long as people are using it. And, you know, in the past, my life was about being in front of sales leaders, in front of salespeople. And I would regularly ask the question, how many of you received a personal video email addressed just to you in the last year? And almost no hands uh, would go up at all. And that would be the opportunity to say, do you see how, how uh, green the field is for you to go out there and work in? Uh, and I think at a time, 
they might have said, well, my customers may not be ready for that. It might spook them a little bit. Ethan, can you talk a little bit about adoptability as what we're seeing right now? Because suddenly people who were, may have been a little bit technophobic over the last four months didn't have a choice. Yeah, I'll share a couple thoughts and a caution. You know, the first thing is what you're saying is exactly right in this window. And again, it's taken a lot longer than it should have. This technology is not new. What we yeah. do inside the Gmail inbox, our mobile apps, the foundations of these tools, our, our Salesforce integration, these are years old and we are growing nicely. But to your point, so many people out there haven't received this. And so the act of sending a simple personal video alone itself is differentiating. It will stand out in the inbox. It will stand out in a LinkedIn message, which is another great place to put these videos. And so the act of communicating this way is a differentiator. But ultimately, when my vision and my hope, and I'm sure Steve shares it, is that this becomes as normal, like sending a video becomes as common as, oh, maybe I'll pick up the phone and give them a call. No, nah, maybe actually I'll send a video. Do I need a meeting for this? No, nah, I'll just send a video. That it just becomes part of the mix and part of the opportunity you have to connect and communicate with people. Ultimately, when videos do become more common and half the room raises they, their hand when you ask that question or three quarters raises their hand when you ask that question, ultimately, you are your own best differentiator. That's the reason you hire the salespeople you do is that they can connect more effectively they're good communicators. They have a sense of empathy and all these kind of soft side things that you like to see and that you test for when you're selecting and hiring your salespeople, that all gets lost when you hide them behind a cloak of digital anonymity. And then my only last caution here is that you can't take bad messaging, bad products, selfish uh, subject lines, selfish email bodies, and turn them into videos and expect them to magically be a lot better. You will get some extra attention because it is different than what most people are sending, but you garbage in, garbage out. You can't take garbage, put it in a video and expect it to just blow the doors off your business. But, but having said that, it doesn't seem like it's that hard. And I've seen evidences of that where uh, people are using video email in very creative and fun ways that really do add value. And, and so I'm just thinking about one salesperson I know she's in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, she is just, she's caught, the vision for what video email can be. And when she's, she's driving by the soccer fields near where she, her community, where she's selling it. And there was a, there was, this was several months ago when kids still played soccer, but there was a soccer going on in the fields and she just pulled out the phone and from her car, she just recorded a quick, I know you got, you know, young kids at home. This is the field. This is where they're going to play soccer. I can get you more information about it. I mean, it, it took 15 seconds for her to do that, but what an opportunity to stand apart. The concern that I think that most salespeople have, and I'd love either one of you to address this just a little bit, is I wrote an entire book on what I call comfort addictions, those things that get in the way of us doing what we really should do because we're uncomfortable. It might be the discomfort with the technology, but I think my guess is that you're going to say, no, the greater the discomfort is just what do people feel about being on camera and how do I look? How do you address that, that sense of what it means to be on camera and the, the, the hangups that people have along those lines? Uh, well, there's two answers to that. So uh, I'll do the tactical, Ethan, we'll do the philosophical. Uh, okay. <laughs> so so the, I, I think I split that up uh, accurately. So the tactical answer to that, that question would be, there's some little things that you can do if you're uncomfortable on camera to become more comfortable. And the first thing to do is just realize, uh, I'm going to get a little philosophical, but it, it's your flight or uh, fight response which mm -hmm. is kicking in and telling you that you're in danger and that your hands sweat and you get nervous. And so the tactical element here is before you record your video, actually going to take one step back, who you send your videos to, then I'll tell you before you record, send your videos, practice first with friends and family members, record short form video messages to send them in a text, send them in uh, Facebook messages or email messages and send it to someone that you know, someone that likes you, someone that already trusts you. So that, that way you don't need to worry about my building great rapport and you know, my start from here and I need to move up here. No, you're already, you already have a great relationship. So that's one. But two is right before you send that video, if you're still nervous, one of the best tips that we've found and we teach this all the time and we watch this happen in a five minute, five minute period within two videos is if you think about something positive, 
before you send that video, you take 20 seconds or 30 seconds, close your eyes, think about something that makes you happy. Think about a person that makes you happy. The same part of your brain that's responsible for anxiety is the same part of your brain that's responsible for gratitude. And, and you can't feel both at the same time. So if you think about what you're grateful for, you push away that anxiety and you immediately record your video right after, even if it's not, obviously it's not to that person that you were thinking about, but you put your headspace in a different position and your video will be so much more engaging and you're going to be so much more relaxed just by that quick little tactical tip. Now, Ethan, I don't know if you want to dive into the philosophical. Yeah. I'll just go really quickly and offer a couple things because you did cover both pretty well there. Um, I would just say that what you're talking about is in the case of video, Jeff, is what we call the paradox of vulnerability. And the paradox is that the exact same thing that makes this style of video so hard for people to get comfortable with right out of the gate, right? Fear of judgment, fear of rejection, the deep, deep human things that really pain us, right? We might not be thinking these things consciously, but we hate judgment and rejection. Uh, although salespeople certainly have much more resilience around the rejection side of it. But it's now it's not just rejecting the offer. It's rejecting me. Are they going to reject me? Are they going to reject who I am? And so the exact same reason that it's so difficult to do and it's vulnerability, this uh, uncertainty and emotional exposure we feel is the exact same reason this style of video is so effective. When you strip off the gloss, the polish, the production, the cheap suit of the guy shooting at you across the sales floor, whatever the case may back when we used to shop in person, uh, you sure. know, yeah. when we strip yeah. all that stuff away, you become immediately so much more approachable and your ability to thrive in that moment of vulnerability and be yourself with confidence and joy and reach out to someone legitimately in a position of value and opportunity, your ability to do that immediately makes you multiple times easier to connect with and to relate to. And so you're speeding up the trust and rapport process so much more quickly when you can live in that moment. And so uh, as Steve said, start with people you know and start with easy matches, messages like, thank you, good job, congratulations, I've been thinking about you. These things that we're seeing on LinkedIn every day, your LinkedIn feed is filled with reasons to send a personal video to somebody. Yeah, totally. So you're suggesting here that, you know, it, okay, I'm holding up the phone and it's a little choppy and half the time it's missing my right ear. Big deal. <laughs> the, 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 the raw actually is what makes it more authentic. Yeah, I wouldn't go out of your way to knock the production value. But I also, Fair enough. But likewise, I wouldn't go out of your way to overproduce it either. Your yeah, webcam right, or your smartphone right. is is perfectly fine. My, my and wife, if you my, do get into go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead, wife, Steve. My favorite story is uh, the first time she sent a video out. She she was selling skincare products at the time, and I'm like, "Honey, you got to use Bomb Bomb. You're married to the to the CMO. It's embarrassing." And she's like, "All right, yeah. I'll try it out." She adverse to it. So she was sending an email to a, a real estate agent in Westchester, Pennsylvania, very first video. And she had all like the pamphlets and the products in her hands and she's holding them. And she, she, she was recording and she dropped them all like 30 seconds into the video onto the floor and she pops out of the frame and she's picking up the products and I'm in the kitchen and I'm like, going. And so she popped back into the frame and her face is bright red. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, and then she just continued. And when she stopped the video, she's like, no way am I going to send this video out. And I was like, like yeah, I guess you are. Yeah. And she, <laughs> she sent it or I sent it. Right. And, uh, and she got a call back in 15 minutes from Susan. And the first 10 minutes of that conversation was like, oh my God, I love that you sent that. I'm, I'm klutzy right. too. Here's when I was klutzy. Yeah. Here's when you're klutzy. They talked about being klutzy. And then she's like, I'll just buy all the products. So that relationship yeah. was built off of your, your imperfect nature is what makes you perfect. And so it was that element of true uh, humanity and like, hey, I'm a real person. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. And that's how they connected. Just to encourage people who haven't tried video email yet, you know, just think about when you had to leave the outgoing message on your voicemail for the first time. And I remember years ago, I, I was recording the outgoing message on my voicemail back when we had home. Remember when we had home telephones? I don't know if anybody remembers that. But I had my machine and it was like, okay, I got the manual on the recorders. Like when I push pound now, do I have to? Uh, uh, hi, it's, um, uh, I forget who I am. You know, and you go through it and you have to do it over and over again. And, and, I, and I was like, 
why is this such a big deal? And finally, we used, I just relaxed. I just took a deep breath. And, and just in the spur of the moment, I hit pound and I said, you can stop paddling because you've reached the shore. Beep. And that was it. And that's what I put on the, re- and I got to tell you, people would call my machine because they heard about the message. It was that's just awesome. great. But the idea was that there was that authenticity that says, just be you, just be you and you're going to be fine. Is it that easy? Is the advice that simple? It is that simple, but it's, it's, it's that simple to say. It's that yeah. simple to hear, but, but getting over that initial hurdle again, I cannot encourage you enough to start with people you already know and who yeah. know you, because right. if you send five or 10 videos, like I described, thank you. Good job. Congratulations to a team member, to a friend, to a past colleague, to a family member, whatever. I guarantee that you're going to get a, re- a replies from people that immediately tell you this is a different and better way to work. Yeah. It's going to right, be so right. obvious because they're going to do things where they try to give back that same energy. They're going to add some more exclamation points than normal. They're going to put in that little smiley face emoticon with the colon and the parenthesis. They're going to yeah. put some words or phrases in all caps. And what they're trying to do is give back to you the same energy that you were able to convey in the video. And you're going to immediately know, okay, this is better. And so it is all about being yourself. There is no such thing as a video person in this context. Now, if, if you, if you are a straightforward numbers oriented, analytical, soft-spoken person, you can't, you're probably not going to carry a YouTube channel with 85 killer 30 minute episodes, but I know that you can carry a 30 second video to communicate more clearly or to pat someone on the back or to get someone to say yes to whatever you need them to say yes to. Sure. Last question. Um, what happens next when, when we, as we, I've said this before, I, I, it, it, this is still cutting edge. It shouldn't be, but it's still cutting edge as long as people aren't using it as they, as they could. What happens next when we think about the future normal well, right now, we're in this temporary normal, right? The old normal is gone. We're in this temporary normal. When you're thinking about what video looks like moving forward, what technology looks like moving forward, what are the two of you, you guys are futurists. What are you thinking about as you look into the future? Um, I'll go with a, a more immediate future. And Ethan, I don't want to, we, we did the chapter on uh, the, the future future as well in the yeah. book. But for the immediate future, you know, when you communicate with text, it's, it's a single dimension. It's simply the words that, that you select and choose. When you communicate over the phone, there are two dimensions. It's, it's audio and the words that you select. When you communicate through video, there's three dimensions, right? It's your the visual delivery, the audible delivery. Uh, and the words that, that you select. And so it can be, and this is why people are nervous, you know, there's three different dimensions. It, as Ethan mentioned before, it's not just using video. You, mm-hmm. you have to be good at it. And so now that more and more people are using video, the next phase of it is there's, you can go to training classes for a week on telemarketing. You can train for years on telemarketing and still not be great. And so there's a similar element here. The people that are excellent in video, Danny Dorkson, who sent over 17,000 one-to-one videos, is a master at getting his point across, being succinct, having a clear CTA and getting responses that someone that only sent 50 videos is not going to be as good at. And so there's a teaching and a training element. And so the future of this is for products like bomb bomb or other products out there in my mind is for the product to teach people how to be effective communicators because video is just the container for the message. It still comes down to your salesmanship, your ability to communicate, your ability to connect with people. And there's a juxtaposition between those two, your messaging and the video. And if the product can tell you and give you guidance and tips and tell you what you did right or wrong, or, or give you that when, when things aren't going your way and you're not getting video plays, or they're not watching all of your videos, wouldn't it be great if the product jumped in and the product said, Hey, here are some tips for getting a hundred percent video views. Here are some tips for getting your videos played and, and guiding you along. So that, and, and, our opinion uh, is the immediate future. And that's what we're trying to do at BombBomb is provide that guidance to success for people. Uh, Only thing I'll add there is that, of course, a lot of that is technology-based, right? Applying uh, models to say, is this more effective or is that more effective? Length of the video, framing of the person, pace of speech, all these other cool things that um, are hard to do now are going to get easier and easier over time. I would also add a caution where just like everything else, Someone right now is working on fake videos. Someone else right now is working on something to trick people into feeling like 
something in the zone is is more personal than it actually is. And I just know that the human instinct is going to be able to separate those things uh, just as is it, you know, initially you start getting spam emails or fake emails or bot emails. And you're like, oh, my right. gosh, this is a thing. And then you realize and then you start, you know, you get burned a couple of times. You're like, oh, this is fake. And now we can all smell it a mile away. And that's why we're all swipe, mm-hmm. swipe, 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 swipe in our inboxes. Right. You know, where we right. were in conversation 20 minutes ago. So I would just caution people. The reason that this style of communication is so effective right now, especially in a one-to-one context, is that this pendulum is swinging back away from over-automation, disrespect of people, treating people like numbers, et cetera. And the same philosophy that produces that in a traditional email or in a social media environment or anywhere else, any marketing environment is going to be applied approximately to this space once the adoption curve uh, really gets more adoption. But people with the with the proper spirit, the proper heart, the proper philosophy and approach to connecting and communicating with people in a meaningful way and a proper exchange of value, the way, in my opinion, I'm speaking only for myself, the way business should be done. Um, right. This will continue to be a separator for people and, and you'll you'll get more feedback and education about how to become uh, better at it. Uh, the more the technology can read your videos and give you coaching. Real, real, that's outstanding. Real quick here. Tell us about the book and where to get it. Uh, the book is called Rehumanize Your Business. Subtitle yeah. is How Personal Videos Accelerate Sales and Improve Customer Experience. You can learn more about it by visiting bombbomb.com forward slash book. That's just B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B dot com slash book. Or you can search Rehumanize Your Business at Amazon. And right now, I don't know when this is going to release, but right now it's over yeah. 50% off hardcover. And Steve and I read the audiobook ourselves, which yeah. uh, was a joy and a separate, separate story for a separate podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, I will tell you, uh, I'm, I'm not just a host of this show. I'm a bomb bomb user. People in my organization use bomb bomb as well. And so, uh, thanks for all you've done. Thanks for uh, being on the buyer's mind. We appreciate it. It was really, really fun stuff. And I'd like to see more people engaged in that. Ethan, Steve, thanks for being a part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us, Jeff. All right. That's such a great interview. A couple of good energy guys, right? Murph. Absolutely. And uh, we, you wouldn't expect any less from guys who are uh, interested in the medium that we like as well. Right. Sure. Well, they got to be out there in front of people. And so you want that strong, positive energy. And this is really, really good advice. I, I thought that Steve had mentioned in regards to making sure that your mindset is right before you record a video email. Right. You can't just say, OK, here's my to do list, task, 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 record a video email. I mean, that's not the way it works, you, you, if, especially if it's for working with a customer, for prospecting, for follow-up, whatever it might be, you better be in the right frame of mind. And I know you've seen that, Murph, right? You can tell when you're watching a video whether somebody is really there or whether they're just sort of mailing it in. Well, you know, people are either genuine or they're actors, right? So, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, you get that sense of, uh, hi, I'm here, and then people who are just talking. Right, right, which is what people want. They want that authenticity. I just want to challenge you if you're a sales professional and you're not using video email, whether it's BombBomb or some other service, oh, why not? Why not? It's quick, it's cost effective, but most importantly, it is extremely high impact. We are in the video age right now. This is what our customers are used to. And not just the millennials who grew up on video. No, people like me, baby boomers who know how to uh, FaceTime with their grandkids. So we are a video society. Why would you not want to take advantage of that? And if the answer is, well, I'm not comfortable, then you are allowing your comfort addiction to stand in the way of serving your customers at the highest level. And I recommend here to you that you dive in, dive in. And even as we heard from our guests, dive in personally first, send the messages to your friends, to your family members, to your loved ones, and practice on that. Get comfortable with that first so that you can get into the mindset of how to make sure you are uh, fully providing that best of your service, the best that you have to offer. This is something I've said it before. I'll say it again. The opportunity is still there to get in front of your competitors, but that window won't be open for long. Do it now or get left behind. This is a great opportunity to go out there and change someone's world. 